Welcome to the Owner's Box. My name is David Williams, and we've got a show for you. We've got Timothy Morris, who started a hustling and a business in high school, and uh, now he's doing fantastic and successful and building a brand. But before we start with Timothy, I want to introduce my co-host, Don Piero from the Empower Lab. Good morning. Exciting again this morning to be meeting with somebody who's in the thick of it, uh, on his way. Absolutely. Well, with that, let's get right into it. Welcome, Tim Morris. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys having me. I'm looking forward to it. So Tim has a, uh, a brand called Vibe Body Care, and he created this product in his garage when he was about, uh, what, 16? Yeah. So um, when I was in high school, um, just a little background on myself, my dad, he's a chemical engineer. Uh, so growing up, I was all, all around the industry. Um, you know, I always saw him, uh, and all the products that he made. So when I got into high school, he saw all the different hair products that I was buying and, you know, spending his money on. And, um, he was like, I make these at work. I'm going to bring home the ingredients and we're just going to make one in, in our garage. And, um, I was, I was all for it. He brought home all the ingredients. He kind of showed me on how to, how to make a product and, you know, how, how chemists do it in, in, in real life. Um, and we made a hundred pomades, uh, which is like a hair gel for men and, uh, took it to school when I was in high school, sold it and made about a thousand dollars off of it. And that's when the idea of vibe, um, really originated. Well, um, we don't have video for this podcast, but I'm sitting here looking across at Don who has no hair <laughs> and I have very little hair. And this, <laughs> this man has a heck of a head of hair and I can tell you why, um, the product looks so good at his hair. So, um, so what did people think about it when you were in high school? Like how did, how did, how did you have that conversation with, with other guys? It was, it was actually, they, they really liked it. And at the time there was no difference between our pomade and a pomade that you could get at the store. But I think it was people just trying to support, you know, a, a kid that's in high school that, that has this hair product. Um, and they, they liked it, but I think it wasn't until, you know, fast forward until when I got into college and, and I just started to really start the company. Um, and that's when, um, people really started to like it. And, and once I saw, you know, right away, you know, people would get the product and post it on their Instagram story or, you know, really, really actually like the product and use it. Um, you know, I, I realized that we had something and, and we could build off of it. So what was your college experience like? Tell us about college. It was not very long, <laughs> to be honest with you. I, uh, so growing up, I played, I played baseball my whole life. And um, I've all, I always wanted to be a professional baseball player. It was like that or nothing. Um, so once I was a senior in high school, uh, I didn't have any scholarship offers to any Division I schools. So I decided to go to the, a junior college. Um, I went to Fullerton Junior College, which is a really good baseball school um, in JC. And I went there for six months. I played baseball for six months and I would be, the practice for junior college is like six hours. So I would be out there for six hours just thinking about how I could be starting a company or, you know, making money rather than, um, you know, just sitting at a, at a baseball field for six, seven hours of, of, of the day. So college was cool. It was a good experience. Um, but, you know, just just really getting out, you know, doing your own thing is, is what, I, what I like better. I was only in college for six months. <laughs> so not very long. <laughs> and just to go, just to rewind again. So was your dad an entrepreneur? Are there any entrepreneurs in your family? Um, actually, no. A lot of my family is law enforcement. Um, like my, my mom's side of the family, for example, is all LAPD. All every, every, everybody's LAPD, either SWATs or, or something. And then my, my dad's side of the family is really no entrepreneurs. I would say um, the only person, obviously, my, my mom owns the gym. So that's, that's, one, that's one entrepreneur we have in the family. And then my dad. But other than my, my two parents, all the other people in the family, we don't really have many entrepreneurs. So, I mean, I, uh, I think it's in my blood. You know, like I, I love it. I, I love, you know, business and entrepreneurship. But uh, I don't know. It definitely doesn't run in the, in the family besides my two parents. Other than that, no one. It's all like law enforcement. Well, it sounds like you got the bug from your mom. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So tell us about the journey so far. Has this thing been just a piece of cake from the get-go or what, what's it been like? Good question. It's uh, definitely not been a piece of cake. Um, it's been a roller coaster. I mean, highs, super high highs and then very low lows. Um, we've experienced it all. And I think that's why it's been such a good learning opportunity. But um, yeah, it's definitely not been, a, you know, a piece of cake. 
we've had times where we, you know, got lost, you know, a lot of money on some bad deals that we made. And then we've also launched in some, some retailers that I, I, I dreamt of, of, of launching in one day. So it's, uh, it's been, it's been crazy. I mean, just to get into some things we, we launched into, uh, you know, a store, a store like urban outfitters, which is a store I grew up shopping in. Um, you know, so seeing, seeing my products in there was, was, was one of the coolest things that, that I've ever experienced. Um, but then there's also, you know, been times where we're running out of inventory or, you know, there are little issues that, that, uh, have came up, which are just, you know, fires you have to put out as a business owner, but it's been, it's been a great learning experience. I would say I wouldn't take anything away. You, um, you brought up Urban Outfitters. So, I mean, that's like an incredible retailer to do business with. And I'm sure it was an amazing and, and emotional uh, feeling. Tell, tell us a little bit about how, you, how did you get the deal and how did yeah. it feel? And are, are you set now? You're ready to buy a multi-million dollar house and retire? Or, or do you still no. have to grind? No, I mean, it's definitely still an uphill battle. But uh, launching an Urban was, was amazing. It was definitely the coolest thing that's happened um, so far. Because like I said, I grew up shopping there. You know, that's where I get a lot of my clothes at. So walking in and seeing my products, you know, on the shelf is a product that I made, you know, really in my head. I, I saw it in my head before I really saw it in my hands. And then now we're seeing it on shelves at a store I grew up shopping in. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Um, but funny, the way we got into Urban Outfitters was we literally sent one of their buyers a message on LinkedIn. Um, I paid for like the, the LinkedIn membership where you could co, you know, send a bunch of people messages. So I went Target, Nordstrom, all these stores, and I messaged 50 different buyers. And we had one person respond, and it was the Urban Outfitters buyer. And she was like, yeah, we love, love the way it looks. Send us the samples. Here's my email. Here's the address. So I sent them samples for five months in a row. Every single month, I would send them a package, you know, on the first of the month or whatever, for five months in a row. And then five months later, we were at a trade show called Cosmoprof, which is one of the, you know, the biggest beauty trade shows out in Las Vegas. And I sent them a picture of our booth. I was like, here's our booth, come check us out. And they didn't end up coming, but three days later, they, we got the email saying, hey, you know, we love your brand, we love your products, we're excited to tell you we're gonna be launching you later this year. So that was when we found out and it, it was crazy how we got in, but really we just stayed on top of it, kept sending them samples, you know, just kept stayed in front of them. And, um, and, and, and that's, that's how we got in. It was a crazy story. Yeah. I love that story. And I think that it shows a lot of perseverance on your part to just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, which is what I like to tell, you know, new and young entrepreneurs. I, I it's analogous to, to a, a story that I have, which was, um, when I got my first major account, it was a dream and it was a rush and it was like, oh my God, I, I've made it. And then um, it, it just it, it inspires and it creates all this fuel to keep going. But then you realize it's just it's just a notch. It doesn't it doesn't really change that much. And, then, yep. and the grind starts again. Yep. I mean, I, in the in the moment, it definitely felt like, you know, I'm going to go buy a million dollar house after we get this deal or I'm going to I'm, I'm good now. Right. That's what it felt like. Uh, but it was really just another, we see it as like a building block. Um, I, I, I think our main goal is to get into Target. And so we see Urban as like a stepping stone to get into Target, um, which, is, which is how we see it now, which is, is very cool. But in the moment, it definitely felt like, you know, our, our world is complete. We got into our dream retailer, um, but uh, there's definitely, you know, still, still more work to be done. And like I said, we want to get into other stores. So Urban's definitely a good, you know, building block to work off of. Besides Target, what are the other stores you have in mind? Uh, Target and Nordstrom um, really are our top two. I think those two stores fit our brand the best, um, as well as Urban Outfitters, of course. Um, but there's also stores like Walmart who, you know, there's a Walmart within a mile of every teenage kid in the, in the country. So um, definitely, you know, like stores like Walmart, CVS, they, they definitely buy a lot of products, but we're trying to strategize on what retailers fit us the best. So I think Target and Nordstrom would be, you know, ideal. And um, luckily we're, we're starting to communicate with both of uh, buyers at both companies. So if we're able to land one of those, then I'm sure I'll feel like even more, <laughs> even more like a million dollars. Um, but yeah, those two, those two really would, would be awesome to get into. This sounds really exciting. I'm curious, have there ever been any moments where you thought, I'm done with this, it's, it's over with, <laughs> any, anything like that? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Absolutely, 100%. I mean, um, 
I just try to stay, you know, as determined as possible because the motivation isn't always there. There's going to be mornings, David, as I'm sure you know, you wake up that you don't want to go to the office, so you don't really feel like working. Um, but there's there's definitely been been some times where I'm like, do I do I really want to do this? And I always just kept always kept going because. Um, you know, even even times when we were first getting started, when there we had nothing going for us, but I was so motivated and I, I, I you know, saw what was possible and I made that happen. So I when I uh, when things aren't going good or when I'm just, you know, not feeling like working, I I try to think back to the days to when we were first getting started, um, you know, and, and, and how far we've came in such a short amount of time, especially at just 19, 20, 21 years old. Um, with no money as well like we we started with a thousand dollars literally so uh just seeing how far we came is is pushes me to like you know keep going even when it gets hard because it does get hard absolutely bit, owning a business you know as, as you know is like literally like being a firefighter you got to be putting out fires all the time you got to be running you got to do everything um so it's it's definitely not the easiest and it's definitely a bumpy road um, but getting into places like urban, you know, growing and meeting random people that know that, that have seen your company, which happens to me now all the time, which is crazy. Um, it, it just makes it totally worth it. You know, um, you, you started this company when you were essentially a teenager. With yeah, a thousand, I was a teenager. Yeah. 19 with a thousand bucks. So how have you financed the company? Like how, how you, Tell, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, uh, really good question. So like when I started, I was I was 19. I didn't have, you know, a hundred thousand dollars of even even ten thousand dollars to throw into starting a company. Um, so at first, like I said, we started with a thousand dollars, super small. And we just did 100 units of our, of our first our first run of, of our hair pomade it was just 100 units because that's all we could afford. Um, and then we'd sell 100 and then go 250 units and then 500. So at first, we really, 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 you know, built off of just our sales and very slow at a time. Um, but then COVID hit and we, we, we saw, you know, something we could do there. So we, uh, right when COVID hit, we made hand sanitizer. Um, and that hand sanitizer, we actually made $20,000 profit just selling hand sanitizer in like two months. So that is what changed the business. Um, we had that hand sanitizer made, we made that money, and then we were able to take that money and then invest it into um, spray clay, which is our top product now. Um, and then we made that spray clay, we got 5,000 units made, and then ever since then, um, you know, we've, we've been growing and things have been going really well. But uh, really, it, it, COVID, COVID happened, we saw an opportunity to do hand sanitizer, we did it, and then we were able to uh, make enough money to get us to the next step. So that's how we did it at first. And then um, fast forward to now, um, obviously, you know, we still don't have, you know, millions of dollars sitting in our bank account and it does cost money, you know, it's for new products and stuff. So uh, we're raising, we're raising a funding round right now with investors. Um, so that's now how we're financing the company. And, uh, you know, obviously we have sales coming in and everything, but to, in the beginning it was very difficult. Uh, you just, we just, you know, had to sell, bring the money back in and then um, make more products. And that's, that's really what we're still doing. All money that we make goes back into the business still. So how, how do you pay yourself? Um, now I pay myself um, through a, I consult for a women's hair care startup. Um, and I, I also, I'm talking with another couple of companies that I could consult for because there's some startups that I could really go on, um, especially over the last two years, I've learned so much just starting this company. So um, there's some startups that are in the same position that I was that I could go on and provide some value. So that's how I pay for myself, right? Like obviously I need to put food on my own plate. Um, and uh, you know, sometimes I want you to go out with friends or whatever, so I need some money to do that. And that's how I, how I do uh, you know, get my personal finances. But all the money that, the, that Vibe makes goes back into the company. And um, I, you know, I tell myself that it'll be all worth it once you know, one day the end goal is to get acquired. Um, and, and to, to sell the company. So I think, you know, one day once, once that happens, um, then it'll be totally worth it. But I, I'm really just enjoying it. I, I, have a, I have a lot of goals for the company. I think, you know, we have 10 more products that I want to do over the next year, um, possibly even get into women's personal care eventually under Vibe as well. So there's so many possibilities and I, I really just enjoy doing it. Um, so, you know, one day, you know, when we sell, it'll, it'll totally be all worth it. But until then, uh, personal finances is just from, you know, little consulting jobs or, you know, helping companies pro you know, providing value where I can. 
Um, but yeah, I'm only 21 years old. So when a lot of people are in my spot, you know, they don't really, 21 year olds aren't, don't really have a lot of money. I just turned 21 a month ago. So, uh, I'm, 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 I'm definitely in a comfortable position right now where, where we are. In these consulting things, what do you find is the biggest contribution you make to them based on your experience? Good question. Um, I would say the social media side of things, um, because that's how we grew our business. 100% online sales, social media, until we launched into retailers like Urban. Um, but really just growing the company from nothing into something on social media is where I provide a lot of value. And then also like, you know, content, product design. There's a lot of, uh, you know, little things that, that I help these companies with. But for example, like this woman's hair care startup is perfect because it's, it's hair care. So it's, it's what I've already started in the past. Um, so I'm able to help them with, you know, formulation changes or what bottle manufacturer to go with or, you know, what filler to go with. That's where I'm able to, to, to provide a lot of value um, is in the beauty side of things because I've, you know, I've already done it. I, I've, I've gone through 50 different bottle suppliers for a shampoo bottle. You know, we've, we've done all of that. So that's where I'm able to provide a lot of value in specific to like a woman's hair care startup like this. You know, um, when I started my first business, there was no Internet to market and sell on. And the last company I just invested in is almost entirely direct to consumer. And it's all about social media, Facebook mm -hmm. sales, Instagram sales. You're starting at a young age in that, in that uh, time period where that's how you start from zero, no one knowing your product. Um, I'm sure the listener is really interested to hear like, what are the steps that you took to start creating that awareness and that direct to consumer relationship. Yeah, I mean, it was a whole, you know, different world from when you started your company compared to like today's uh, day and age. Um, but like you said, there, there used to be no internet. So growing a company has completely changed over the course of the last 10, 20 years. Um, that's why it's, it's so new, like in the position that we're in is, is the, the, the way that we're growing our company is, is a way that not, not a lot of people have done in the past. So we're using, um, for example, something that's worked really well for us is TikTok, um, just organic TikTok. We hire, we have a full TikTok team. We have three different influencers that post videos every single day. Um, so we're posting three videos a day, 90 videos a month, all organic videos on TikTok. And that's um, helped us by far. We've grown to 35,000 followers in three months. Um, it's totally bringing engagement to our products. Our, our average video views like 10,000 per video. Um, so like just random people that that would have never seen our brand um, That TikTok, you know is a way to get in front of them and then as well as just social media ads Influencers have been big for us. Um, we've been we've been using a bunch of different type of influencers TikTok influencers athletes college athletes now college athletes are able to to advertise for for brands and get paid um, There's there's so many different ways, you know with social media uh, that you could grow a company and that's that's what we've been doing even affiliates you could um, you could have a even a customer they could you know purchase a product on your website you could give them a discount code and say hey use this discount code to give to your friends and then if you if they use your discount code we'll pay you 10% of the order um, so we have a software that does that and uh, so we're, we're bringing in affiliates like there's so many different little things that so we do let's back up a second just so I understand what you're saying uh, influencer makes a TikTok video with your product. And you're not actually paying them for that. They have all of these followers. They get a code from that TikTok guy or that person. They go and they go into your website. They buy it. They use the code. They get a discount and the TikTok person gets paid. Right. Correct. But it doesn't cost you any upfront advertising money. No. So it's brilliant. There's a couple of different ways to go out, uh, about this um there's obviously different sized influencers so like the the kardashians for example they would never agree to something like that because they need to check you know up front and to post the to post the video um so like the bigger influencers who we have worked with in the past and they have been successful for us you write them a check before um you know you say one instagram post or one TikTok for like five thousand dollars or whatever let's just say um and then they post it and then they bring people to your website and you make all the money there. So let me just stop you right there. If you pay for $5,000 for a major influencer to, to post a video, what is your return on investment? Like what, what is your expectation in your brand? Great question. It's all over the place with different type of influencers. Um, 
so it's the, to answer your question, it's depending on the influencers, but our goal, let's just say we're paying $5,000 for an influencer. We want to get at least $25,000 in revenue back from that. Um, and, and that's what, that's what we normally see, especially if we're paying $5,000 and they have to have at least over a million followers on Instagram. Um, but there's, you got to understand it really like these little numbers, like we, whenever we're working with the influencers, we want to ask them to see their analytics. We want to see how many people are viewing their page, viewing their page, viewing their videos, liking, commenting, their male to female ratio on their followers. Like there's a lot of different things that go into it. Um, but for something like that, you write them a check they post and then you know you see the sales after but for affiliate influencer marketing um you just like that where you say hey we're going to send you these products for free so that's that's the only risk you take you send them the products uh they get the products they make the TikTok with it and they post it with the discount code and then that's when they come you know they and, and you bring just free people onto your website and that's worked really well for us um, but yeah, there's a lot of different angles you could take with influencer marketing, but that's why it's worked so well with us because we're trying it all. And NIL is new. Exactly. And, and, and for those that don't know what NIL is, it's essentially, um, allowing college athletes to monetize their image or likeness. And, and so how, how has NIL worked for you? It's worked great. Um, we jumped on it right away. I, I think like literally the day they announced that college athletes were allowed to start working with companies is the day that we started emailing, texting, DMing every, you know, college athlete that we could find. Um, but I'm, I'm basically a college kid. So I, uh, you know, right when I saw these, this news, I knew that every kid is going to jump on this, no matter how many followers they had, as long as they could get free stuff because they're college kids, right? If I was in their position, I'd be doing the same thing. So, um, we messaged all these, all these players, you know, Michigan football players, Ohio State, Alabama, baseball, everything. Um, and we said, hey, we want to ship you free products. Uh, all you have to do is post it with your discount code. You can make money with your code. And I would say almost all of them agreed. They said yes. So we got their address, sent them products, and it, it's still, they're still posting every single day. Some of them even throw us in their bio. Um, and, and the best thing about it, I think, is we have just really good products. Um, and that was my main thing when we got started is we need to have top of the line products because when we do ship, you know, a random person, a random football player products in order for them to push it, it has to be something they like and they have to like the smell, the look, everything. So, um, you know, we, we send them the products, they really do like them. And then that's when they post them and, and tell their friends about it. Yeah. I really like what you're sharing with us because I think about some of these, um, um, college athletes who have 40, 50,000 followers. And you get enough of them doing it that creates a tremendous amount of awareness for your brand. And that gets the eye of urban outfitters because their demographic is that is that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, and um, really ties together. And, um, you know, a lot of there's college athletes of, of all size, 40,000, 50,000. But but even if they have like 5000 followers, those 5000 people will be the most loyal 5000 people to that one individual. Um, so we've seen somebody with 5,000 followers do better than somebody with half a million followers in just revenue that they brought in just because those 5,000 people are, they're, they're so loyal rather than these 500,000 that aren't as involved with the influencer. And that's why it's important to check, you know, their analytics and seeing, uh, how many people are really engaged with them, how many likes they're bringing in. Um, but, but yeah, the, the NIL, the college thing is, is worked amazing for us. We're going to keep going hard there. And, and just out of curiosity, does... Uh, Facebook work for you or is that demographic too old? No, no. Yeah. Facebook, it doesn't work for us. In Instagram, TikTok, um, a little bit of Snapchat are our main three, but mainly Instagram, TikTok. But uh, yeah, Facebook, obviously we have our Facebook account and um, we post there all the time, but it's not converting like TikTok, for example, because that's just not our demographic. And that was our main thing. Like when we were getting started, we saw companies like Old Spice and all these big, you know, men's beauty companies um and they market towards 30 40 50 year old men they weren't they weren't marketing towards people my age um so when we started we we're like okay we're gonna go after gen z we're gonna go after millennials and um and how do we you know get those people to to, to like our products well you make it look good cool colors and you make it smell good and, and that's what we did with our products what about amazon um, Amazon's worked really well for us because it's obviously one, the biggest marketplace in the world and two, it's 100%, you know, trustable. 
um, we would do it like for example we do an Instagram ad somebody would see it but they're iffy about you know purchasing off a random website well then they go check Amazon and we're on Amazon so then they purchase it on Amazon they know they could trust Amazon and they get it the next day so I think uh, just the convenience factor of Amazon has worked really you know well for for our customers but uh, the only problem with Amazon is they take a big chunk you know of, of each order because they're they're keeping it in their warehouse and fulfilling it themselves so take us into your vision uh, the future you talked about someday maybe being acquired uh, where are you now in terms of sales where will you be what's the next five years look like or is it five years yeah really good question um, I, I, I think I I don't have a timeline um, like I don't I don't I'm not like I want to be out in three years or sell in three years I, I genuinely enjoy it um, but you know one day we want to one we want to get into Target obviously you know like I mentioned um, but but mainly just grow out our product line um, we're launching a men's accessory a men's scalp comb um, that you use in the shower to basically wash your hair and your scalp it helps with dandruff and dry scalp um, but we're launching that in a week and a half and then we're launching a men's pomade um, to sell alongside our spray clay in two months. So we're, our goal is to, to release a product every two to three months over the next year or so, really grow out our product line um, and, and, and just go from there. But really the goal one day is to get acquired. I mean, there's companies like us every day, companies like Native, Cremo, who get acquired for $100, $200 million from companies like Procter & Gamble and all these big dogs that come in. Um, so obviously that's the goal eventually. Um, but really I just want to make really good really good products in in all hair body skin everything um everything for men and and do it all under all under one brand because i think a lot of companies will focus on hair or body um and not not really everything um so we we want to we want to do it all what do you see sales in 2022 and what do you see sales being in 2025 good question um so it's funny i mean first year in business from starting my garage to a, a year from then was I think no more than twenty thousand dollars, and then right after that year hit is when we uh, we made one hundred and fifty thousand dollars revenue. Um, so to the twenty twenty two we're supposed to hit at least five hundred thousand dollars in sales. I think that we're gonna pass that by far. Um, that was just our you know our analytical projections is to do at least half a million dollars, but uh, you know, there's a company like Target could come in tomorrow and write us a, write us a PO and that changes everything. Um, and I think with the way that we're growing on social media with you know, the influencers that we're using um, and then also the products that we're gonna be releasing is I, I don't think there's any way that we make, we make under that. I think we're gonna pass that by far. And then 2025, um, I think that uh, we could be passing at least $5 million in sales by then because uh, We've, we've grown at least 25% year over year since we've launched. Um, so if we keep that going, then we could absolutely be there. And which is crazy because I'm only 21 years old. So, I mean, doing, um, doing numbers like this is, is, is definitely insane. It's, it's something I would have never thought of. Uh, but like I said, everything we make, we just throw it right back into the business. Tim, being a 20-year-old entrepreneur, uh, what, if any, blind spots have you found in your adventure so far with this company? Yeah, um, I think some difficulties that we've had as we grew was, you know, keeping our cash flow in line, um, keeping all of our company, you know, our analytics are, you know, staying organized. That was our a difficulty. Um, you know, companies, when they grow, they bring on full on finance teams or, you know, accountants and stuff. And at the time we didn't we didn't have any. So uh, when we were starting to experience growth at first, that was definitely a difficulty we ran into. Um, and that's, that's why we brought on, you know, our advisors that we have now, because, you know, these, these advisors are people that own companies, um, that have been in the position that, that I was in and that I am in now. And, um, I think, you know, having advisors as a business owner, especially as a young business owner is almost, you know, it's like a cheat code. Um, these people, they have all the connections you need. They've been in your position, you know, they, they, they're successful and, uh, they believe in you and your company. So, um, that's, that's how we've solved the, some of the difficulties that we've ran into, um, as advisors. Where'd they, where'd they come from? How'd you source them? Um, all over. So we, I, 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 I have one investor who has introduced me to a lot of, you know, successful individuals. Um, and I met him just through reaching out to him on social media. I said, Hey, I have this company. I want to bring you some products. Um, I think you'll like them. 
and uh, he reached back out to me he, and he was like come come to my store he's a store out in LA um, brought him the products he believed in it and um, six months after that he ended up investing so um, I think really just networking has has changed the game for for myself because I'm getting get involved with individuals like that um, but but really just just networking going to events trying to put myself in front of successful successful entrepreneurs and surround myself with successful entrepreneurs um, is, is how I found our advisors and what makes them stick around why, why are they here um, they believe in the company. Um, they believe in me, obviously. Uh, that's, that's, I think, one of the main things that they all pointed out. Um, but but I, I, I sell them on the vision that, that I have in my head, um, and that's that we're going to you know, build out this product line. We're going to launch into stores like Target and Nordstrom, and then one day we'll, we'll be able to get acquired by a, a big dog like Procter & Gamble or Unilever. Well, and you also came up with a pretty creative way to compensate them. Share that with our listeners. Yeah, um, so all of our advisors each have a chunk of the business. They every every advisor has one percent of the company, um, and and that is how that incentivizes them enough to want to help us out. Um, and 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 it they believe in the company, so if they have a piece of it, they're going to obviously want to help you grow it. Um, so each advisor has one percent, and that's I've found that to be very successful. And and later realized that that's not how you know other other companies bring on their advisors, and that's not exactly why. But uh, it's worked more than when than well for us, and and I don't regret uh, bringing on any advisor that we have that we have now. Well, it says a lot about you. You value their information, and information is valuable to you. And it's worth giving up uh, equity in the company for that information. Right. So right. I, I applaud you for that. That's 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 a great way to surround yourself with fantastic, thoughtful business leaders. Right. No, absolutely. And and I think now we have like a dream team. Um, I think we have a team of some really, really, really smart individuals um, that work together very well. We get on team calls once a week. Um, and these are guys that I, there's no way I would have been able to, to you know land a meeting with them if if they didn't believe in the company because they're doing big things on their side. Um, so I think, you know, if you're starting a company, you know, bringing networking and bringing on these, these smart individuals um, with experience is totally worth it. So what have you learned in your uh, fast three, four years of building this thing that would be valuable to share with other young entrepreneurs that want to do what you've done? Yeah, I mean, I think the the example of Urban Outfitters is is a really good uh, takeaway. I mean, that that this is a company that you know, hundred million dollar company that has stores all over the U.S. and we're just a small you know little business running out of a garage, and we just kept sending them products you know month after month. We just you know stayed on top of it. We weren't bothering them, but um, we we weren't giving up. And we, we were never going to give up until we did launch into, you know, urban or, or target it into a big retailer. Um, so I think just staying persistent and just, you know, staying on top of things, never giving up whatsoever. And I know people say that all the time, but that's really all it is. Um, there's been so many times where we should have where I should have gave up and I didn't. And, and you know, look where we are now. Um, so I think uh, no matter what, don't take no for an answer. That's another thing. I, I never took no for an answer whatsoever. Um, there was times where we didn't have containers to put our products in. And I had to call 150 different container companies to find this one container. And I did it. I literally was not going to stop until I found one. Um, so I think just, you know, never giving up. Don't take no for an answer. Stay persistent. And uh, one day you'll, you'll, you'll get there. I love it. So um, Tim gave me a bottle of spray clay, and uh, since I don't have much hair, I gave it to one of my employees who has a 20-year-old, and he freaking loves this product, and now he's a customer of yours. Uh, tell us where your product line. Tell us your product line, and where can our listeners go to to buy your product? Yeah, um, our so we have our top product is spray clay. Um, so this is essentially a men's hair clay in a spray version, and uh, people love that stuff. That's what that's what you what you gave him. Um, but then we also have a, a shampoo, a body wash, and then, like I said, we're releasing a men's hair accessory. It's a scalp comb um, next week. So um, you could get all of those products on our website at vibebodycare.com. Um, you know, you could check them all out or on social media, just at vibebodycare on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, everything. Um, and, and that's where that's where you could, you know, shoot us a follow and, and follow along our journey. 
Tim, I am so excited to have had you on the show and I'm even more excited to continue to follow you and see where this thing goes because I feel like sky's the limit for you. And this is probably the first of many businesses that you're going to, uh, you're going to start and run and, and do fantastic. As always, Don, thank you so much for, uh, you know, sitting in the co-pilot seat with me on this. Thank you, Tim. It's been a lot of fun. In fact, you might be the first guy that's inspired us to make sure we get you back here and not too distant future. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much. I had a great time. I really appreciate you guys having me. And with that, we'll see you next time.